Hey, what's going on guys? Alex here with TFO Bike with a little bit of a different video today because we're talking transporting bikes and motorcycle trailers. A long time ago, pretty close to when we first started up TFL Bike, I did a full video on my trailer, which at the time was a 5x8 enclosed Vino's trailer that I kind of converted to a little toy hauler to transport two motorcycles. And I got super sick of that trailer. It was heavy, um, as heavy as a 5x8 trailer can be, but it wasn't easy to kind of move around, um, and I was sick of the walls. So I went with this. This is an Aluma MC10. So same brand as our big Aluma trailer we use to transport cars on. And this has been a killer, killer setup for me. Um, but I'm not just talking about the trailer in this video. Really the star of the show are these Pitbull trailer restraints. And I'm gonna show you how those, these all work uh, and just kind of give you a run through on how I transport my bikes. First, why did I go with an open deck trailer? Two reasons. One, this trailer is aluminum and it weighs like 500 pounds. I was living in an apartment complex where the only place I could put a trailer was a one car garage. This fits in that perfectly. And the other thing is just ease of getting to the bikes. I don't really leave my bikes on a trailer. I take them off right when I get back from the track. So this open deck trailer worked for me. This is the MC10, which is really made for one bike. And that's kind of the reason I'm doing this video is because everyone says you can only use this for one motorcycle. I was determined to make two work and I made it work and no one else on the internet has videos of that. They also make a 210, which is a little wider, uh, but it won't fit in a one car garage. So there you go, there's the trailer. One reason I really like it is because It's got an integrated ramp, so I don't need to pack ramps or anything. This just lives on the trailer and goes everywhere the trailer goes, which is pretty nice. Um, but yeah, come on up here and we'll take a look at these trailer restraints because this is really the star of the show. The trailer comes with these uh, four tie downs in each corner, but I never use those. Uh, I have like once or twice to move a Harley Davidson that I don't have pins for, but let me show you how this works. So slide these back and you can see I installed these thick plates, three of them on the trailer. Um, that way I can do two bikes staggered or I can do one bike in the center. And basically the way these work is you have these latches and these just slide in and latch right into the bolts like that. You don't need tools, they pull out really easily. So I'm gonna set this trailer up to transport four bikes. So I'll do, I'm not gonna use the center plate, I'll just use the two outside plates. And the advantage with these is you don't need to use any straps. So super secure and really easy too once you learn how these work. So there we go. Trailer's all set up now, ready to accept two bikes. Um, now I just got to attach these two trailer restraints to the motorcycles I'm gonna be transporting. So let's go to the bikes. So the two bikes I'm putting on the trailer today are this Yamaha XSR 900 and a really tiny Honda Monkey, but I promise you two full-size sport bikes do fit on this trailer side by side. Sometimes you gotta put a ratchet strap to kind of hold the handlebar off to one direction, but um, yeah, it fits pretty well. So the way these work is these are going to attach right here to the rear axle of the motorcycle. And these are universal fit parts. So I have two of these because I have two spots for a bike on my trailer, but we'll look at my little toolbox here. And you can see I've got pins for every bike I own. So um, we're gonna need the monkey pins, obviously, and we're gonna need the XSR pins. But if we look in here, I've got pins for my R6, I've got pins for my Ovale, I've got pins for my friend's Ducati. So every bike you, uh, you wanna transport with these, you need a separate set of pins, and that's the one downside with it. And these aren't the cheapest things in the world. It's about 100, 120 bucks for a set of pins, depending on what bike you get. Um, and then the actual restraint system with pins and with the plates for the trailer is about 360 bucks. So a lot more expensive than straps, but I promise you a lot better. And you'll see that in just a second. I really like how on these pins, the locking cotter pins that go through them are attached with cables. So it's pretty much impossible to lose any of this stuff. 
And basically, you just get this lined up here. We'll figure out which one is our right side, which is this. Put the pin in and it slides right into that hole on the axle there. And then we'll do the same thing on the other side. And then once you've got this all set up, they even give you a little bungee cord attached to here, which you can hook somewhere on the bike to uh, just keep it out of the way while you ro ride this up or load it up onto the trailer. Just like that. Now I'll put the monkey one on. I've got both of the trailer restraints mounted up to each bike. The monkey took me a little longer because I had to pull off the frame sliders off the back of that, but um, as long as you don't have anything blocking the axle, it takes like 20 seconds to get these installed. Now I'm just gonna bring it up on the trailer and latch it in place. It takes a little bit of wiggling back and forth. It's a lot easier if you've got one other guy to just kind of drag the rear end of the bike where it needs to go. But that's one of the reasons I did this was so I could do it myself. Uh, Cause it is a lot easier than trying to balance a bike and get it all strapped down. Basically you just put these two pins in, bike is secure. So it does offer a little bit of movement in the bike but it's not going anywhere. And uh, one of the best parts of the system is there's zero weight being put on the suspension right now. So rear shock is basically free floating. Same with the front forks. So you're not gonna blow out your fork seals going down the road. Let me uh, get this other latch put in right here and we'll get the monkey loaded up. Well, there you have it. Just kind of a quick behind the scenes on how I transport my personal motorcycles with this Aluma NC10 trailer. Like I said at the start of this, I did a lot of looking online into this trailer when I was looking to buy it. Everyone showed it with one motorcycle on it. I made it work with two and it works great with these Pitbull trailer restraints. I like them because they're uh, really secure, don't need to deal with straps, doesn't put any sort of stress on my suspension. Um, and yeah, it's just super easy. Pricing for the trailer was about 3,400 bucks. Pricing for the Pitbull restraints, they're about 350 to $400. Uh, depending on what bike you need and what pins you need and what plates you need for the floor. Um, so yeah, way more expensive than straps. Not gonna be for bikes, you only move once or twice because you need the bike specific pins. But if you're like me and you transport the same bikes all summer long over and over, this is a great system to look into. Plus the trailer's small and light, I can pick it up by hand and just wheel it to where it needs to go. One thing I did want to point out, I've only had this trailer a little over a year and one of the welds for this ramp door uh, snapped off right there, which seems to be a trend with the Luma trailers. Um, our other Aluma trailer that we use had some similar issues with uh, welds breaking and things popping out. So love the trailer. Um, if you're willing to, you know, put a little TLC into it, it works great. There you go. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next video.